Okay. I'm going to sterilize my equipment once again since I've been working on other varieties. And I usually, <laughs> I usually wipe it off on my on my jeans. I don't think anybody wants a towel to do that. This method is chip butting, and it's another very good method to use with Fortuniana. Um, commercially, nurseries probably do more uh, bench cleft grafting than they do chip butting, but for a home uh, hobbyist rose grower, I really like chip budding. So I've got three already rooted Fortuniana plants here. They've, they've grown out a full flush of growth since they were rooted. They're probably two to three months old. And then I have my scion here. This is the variety Aussie Sixer. Um, and, and as was true with the uh, cleft bench grafting, I've got a flower here that is finishing. The fact that there's still a bud here doesn't matter. What I want is a stem with a finishing flower. That indicates that this stem is an ideal age for budding or grafting. And I'm going to trim this up. Until I do this, it's important to keep it damp with my spritzer. But once I take the leaves off, that's not going to be much of a problem. If you just pull the leaves straight down, sometimes you'll rip bark down the stem. So what I normally do is put my thumb right at the base and then snap onto my thumb. And that way I don't get any ripping. And so I want to remove all the leaves. And then I'm also going to remove the prickles just by pushing sideways on them. Some varieties, when you do that, you can feel the bark cracking above and below the prickle. If that happens, you have to trim them off because you, you really don't want any cracked bark in this method. But these are snapping away very nicely. And um, we'll just set that aside for the moment. Now, that, unless I'm out in the hot sun and I don't normally do budding in the hot sun, this can sit for an hour or more without having any water added to it or any protection because it's not really losing much water. I certainly would not want to leave it in the sun. I would not want to leave it overnight. But I've got time for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven buds on this, so I can bud seven plants and not have to worry about that drying out. Now on my Fortuniana plants, I need to have a couple leaves at the top, but none down below and any side shoot that's made I'm going to shorten those back and so that's going to be my plant ready to be budded. For this one I'm going to break off a few of the lower buds and keep some of this new growth with a few leaves but not a lot of it so that one is also ready to go. And I've kind of matched these up. This, this cyan stem is of course thicker here than it is up here. I'm going to try to find a spot on this stem that more or less matches the thickness of my rootstock. So this rootstock plant is a bit thinner than this one, so this will get a bud that's higher up, this will get a lower bud. And then this one also. Trim off any side branches except the ones at the very top. So uh, it doesn't really matter how many leaves I have up here as long as you've got some leaves. If you go totally leafless, um, Fortuniana in some weather will kind of balk at that and may die back. So here's my thickest stem and then my second thickest and my third thickest. I'm going to start at the bottom of my cyan stick for that reason. For chip budding, I like to use chip budding tape. I buy this from A.M. Leonard. It's clear, it's quite thin, and I would recommend the first time you use it, pull a piece off and just break it so that you kind of learn the muscle memory of how far you dare stretch that before it breaks. And your goal is going to be, when you wrap your bud, wrap it as tight as you can without breaking that tape. Um, and that's a challenge until you just get accustomed to it. So here's my bud I'm going to use. Again, it's very important for it to be right side up. If you're not sure, the bud is above the scar when I took the leaf off. So. Um, I'll put a link below to another video by Bob and Kitty Melendez, and they uh, chip bud their roses on Fortuniana, and Bob does his upside down from the way I do mine. I don't mean the scions upside down, I mean he cuts it this way from bottom to top. I cut mine top to bottom. I always say when I'm teaching grafting that there is no best way to do it, use what works for you. 
So he's good at that method, I'm good at this method, it's an alternative. So supporting this bud, bud stick with the fingers of my non-dominant hand, I'm, I'm left-handed, so in this case it's my left hand, I'm gonna hold it like this. That means that as I cut through this with my grafting knife, I can't cut any part of that hand. The only part of me that's in front of that knife is this thumb, and I'm not pushing for all I'm worth down here with that thumb. I'm just guiding. So if the knife does come loose, I won't cut myself. That's an important thing. Also, beginning grafters often pull the knife just straight through. If you only use that one little part of the knife blade, you won't get a very clean cut. Other people kind of saw their way through. That's not good. What I want to do is start up here near the base of the blade, and I'm going to make a sweeping cut that ends up near the tip of the blade. So I've used almost the whole blade. I'm going to cut into the wood, but not deeply into the wood. And then holding this with my thumb, I'm going to make a little notch at the bottom. So this is my finished bud. I'm going to hold this for the camera to see. As I do this, it's in the process of dying right now. If I planned on this living, I would have immediately placed that cut side down on my tongue. That's another difference. Uh, Bob Melendez puts his into a bowl of clean water. I always put mine on my tongue. There is actually a good reason for putting it in your mouth. Now, if you've sprayed your roses recently with a fungicide or an insecticide, you may not want to do that. But if they're not, assuming they've not been sprayed with anything toxic recently, um, Human saliva actually is somewhat antiseptic for, to those bacteria and fungi that, that harm roses. And so I really do believe in the uh, spit factor here. Now on my rootstock, I, by the way, I just put that in my mouth, you didn't see that. Um, I'm gonna take an area that's nice and smooth and flat and I'm gonna try to cut a wound that is almost exactly the same size and shape as the wound that this bud came out of. So I want to replicate that. And I'm going to cut a little notch at the bottom, leaving a flap here that can be pulled open. That will hold my scion in place. So here's my scion. I slide that down inside that. Um, it's perfectly all right that I've got a little bit extra rootstock cut above my scion. What's important though is that I have a perfect match left and right sides. You won't do that the first time you try it. It takes a little bit of skill to do that. So I usually recommend go out in your garden, take a cane that you were, would have pruned off anyway, cut it off, and just move the buds around. And on your 10th or 15th or 20th attempt, you'll do one that's perfect and then just remember how to do that. So I'm gonna wrap from the bottom up with my grafting tape almost breaking it, overlapping the wraps like shingles. That's gonna seal it against drying. If I have to straighten the bud a bit to keep it on that wound appropriately, I will do that as I go. I wanna wrap the whole way up to cover it completely. And then I usually come back down to get a little more tension. And I'm doing a half twist each time around here. I'm not gonna put that pressure directly on the bud itself, but just above and just below it, I'm pretty significantly increasing the amount of, pre amount of pressure that's on that scion to hold it really intimately against the rootstock. At the bottom then I hold a loop, come around with the tip of the tape, turn that into a half hitch knot, pull it tight, and that's finished. Always important then to label your plant to know what you've just done, especially if you're doing more than one variety. And I said this was Aussie Six or earlier. Sorry, it is showing my rent. They look a lot alike. You can put your label on early if you want to. Uh, doesn't really matter. So I'll do this one a little faster, uh, but hopefully you'll see it again. Um, because I tend to hold it in toward me, and, and it's kind of hard to be cutting way up here. So for this one, I don't need to trim this. But for the for further ones, I can start chopping off the bottom of this bud stick so that I'm always working near whatever is the current base of it. So taking my knife here, I'm going to start maybe half an inch above the bud. I'm going to go in no deeper than maybe a quarter the thickness of the stem using most of that knife blade. I'm slicing. I'm not just pulling it down through. And then at the bottom, I'm going to make a wedge. I want that to come to a point. I didn't quite cut off. So there's a nice wedge, nice clean back with, with uh, no splinters. 
put that on my tongue while I cut my rootstock. I cut that fairly deeply, so I'm going to have to go rather deep on this one also to make them match. Fit that together. That's actually just about a perfect fit on that one. And then I need to have my tape ready to go here. If that bud falls out on the soil, as long as it's not precious and rare, I will usually throw it out. Um, just because it will have been contaminated by the soil. And if I have access to a new one, I'll do that. Again, just keep straightening it as you go, covering the entire bud. Now these plants will not need to be any, in any sort of mist system or other high humidity chamber. The, uh, the plastic tape is gonna hold them in place. Of course, they've already got a root system. And so um, we'll just put these back in the greenhouse in a somewhat shaded position. It doesn't even have to be deep shade. You just don't want that surface getting actively hot. And um, in warm weather, probably uh, 19 to 21 days, it should be healed. In colder weather, we'll sometimes leave them five or even six weeks. I kind of look through the, the tape. I, I like this clear tape because you can actually see through it. If you see a little white edge, it looks almost like raw cauliflower. That's cut callus tissue where it will have healed. Then you know it's time to unwrap. But after, oh, as I say, about three weeks in warm weather or five or six weeks in cold weather, you unwrap it whether you see that or not. So for the third one, I will cut the bottom of my science stick off now just to make it more convenient to work with. And that's a fairly thin stem, so actually I'm going to use this bud up here. I'll cut more of that off. So starting about half an inch above the bud, going no more than a quarter of the thickness of the stem, hopefully a bit less. About an inch to an inch and a half long, make my wedge at the bottom. Put that on my tongue. I'm going to put it right in here. Again, my goal here is to make a hole exactly the size and shape that that bud came out of. Or if anything, a bit longer, but not wider. I've got my ledge at the bottom. The wedge part of my scion can go into. Again, that's a good match. I want, oh, probably a foot to a foot and a half of budding tape, and I will wrap that again, bottom to top, sealing all of it. You don't want any place that uh, evaporation can occur. And since there's no gum on this tape, the only thing that is sealing that is just the fact that you've squeezed it tightly together. Um, as I said, you're, you're trying to wrap it almost as, almost tight enough to break the tape first few times you do this, you'll break the tape several times on each side and you'll think, how did he do that? Well, it's just a matter of practice. You'll get good at it too. Tie the bottom off and that one's done. Be sure to label it. So that is chip budding. Um, you may be aware that in the California and Arizona rose industries, they do a lot of tea budding. And in that case, let me just show you here, they would have taken a knife and they would have made a vertical cut on the stem and then a horizontal cut, almost like a capital letter T, and they would have slid the bud in behind those wedges of bark. Fortuniana does not work very well for tea budding. If you try that, in most cases that bark will just splinter and fall apart and you end up with something you can't use. So um, even though chip budding takes a little longer uh, per graft, if you were using something like Dr. Dr. Huey rootstock, um, for Fortuniana, you really don't have a lot of other choice. Uh, and it works really well. Uh, I like it a lot. These are some plants that I chip budded uh, almost four weeks ago now. They were unwrapped at the three week mark. So this is the rooted Fortuniana cutting. Right here is the bud that was placed. And 
button that you can see there's the little uh, flap at the bottom that held the bud. The bud was compared to my thumb. That's just a little over an inch long. And you can see that the bud is beginning to swell. Uh, when we unwrap them, we cut a notch just above it and that causes that bud to know that it's time to grow. Um, these are all in about the same stage of growth. They're all the same age. So about, as I say, they're about four weeks old and they've been unwrapped for almost a week. If we look over here, these are plants that were grafted about three months ago and which have grown out. And once they grow out and make a growth flush of their own, then you can cut that rootstock top completely off. And these are ready to go now into a one or two gallon pot and be uh, grown on to maturity. Don't be too concerned on a rose if the bud comes out at almost a right angle to the rootstock. On a fruit tree, that would not be good because you want a nice straight vertical trunk. But on a rose, the next time this puts out a growth flush, and it's just beginning to right now, it will send one or two or three canes almost straight up. And eventually we can cut this sideways, sideways cane off. So we're gonna have a vertical rose bush in the long run anyway. Here's another one that's a little older. And um, again, as it makes a new growth flush now, it should send up those side canes. Okay. This is a, a plant of Aussie Sixer. It was grafted uh, in May. This is the end of September. And it has started making those much more vertical canes. So eventually we can cut all of this low growing stuff off and we'll have a nice vertical rose bush. Um, if you look right here, you can see the, the graft union. That is again, is a chip bud. And uh, so the Fortuniana portion is probably five or six inches from the soil. And then from there up is my cyan variety.